Our understanding of human memory was greatly advanced by the unfortunate circumstances of neurological patients. One famous, one of the most famous neurological patients had the initials HM. And in the mid-50s, he was suffering from severe epilepsy. And this is a neurological condition in, in which uh, brain cells in certain parts of the brain are overly excitable and they cause seizures. And surgeons at the time suggested a radical operation to remove portions of his brain so as to treat the epilepsy, to remove those parts of the brain that were causing the seizures. Now, it was difficult to locate the exact source of the uh, seizure in HM's case, so some, uh, but the surgeons went ahead anyway and removed large portions of his brain. Now, here we see a cross-section of the human brain, and the medial temporal lobe is down here with the underlying structure called the hippocampus. Surgeons removed this part of the brain. Here in this brain, we see that the pink structure would be the hippocampus on both sides. There's a left and a right underneath the temporal lobes. We can see better in this picture. Over here we have an intact brain and we're looking at the bottom surface of the brain. So here we have the, the inferior temporal lobe. So the bottom part of the temporal lobe, medial part, would be the, the part of the tissue closer to the midline. So they remove the medial temporal lobe and also what was underneath. And we can see it in this uh, slice of the brain here. They removed what was underneath the medial temporal cortex and that is the hippocampus on both sides. So it was a fairly radical operation. A lot of brain tissue was removed. Now interestingly after the surgery HM had normal working memory, normal short-term memory. Uh, he could hold a conversation which requires keeping track of the last thing said. In addition he had intact semantic memory where word meanings and other basic information about the, wor the world is stored. HM had no perceptual problems and his IQ remained the same. So that's fairly surprising uh, because large chunks of the brain were removed and it didn't seem to have any effect on these mental uh, capacities. However, HM did have a profound episodic memory disturbance. He could not make new memories of events in his life. He could not learn new facts about the world like neurologically intact people could. HM could not convert episodes into new episodic memories and neither could he add new knowledge to his semantic memory. He suffered from anterograde amnesia. So we'll use this diagram to characterize HM's memory deficit. So here we have the idea of uh, a timeline for HM. This is his life here and the arrow indicates when he had surgery. After surgery, he was unable to make new episodic memories. And because episodic memories provide the content for uh, semantic memory, he could not learn new facts about the world. So he couldn't add new things to his semantic memory as well. Now, interestingly, HM also showed retrograde amnesia in a gradient-like fashion, with better retrieval for memories farther back in time from the surgery. Memories just prior to the surgery were inaccessible. So if the arrow indicates the, uh, the moment of the surgery, uh, things that happened to HM just prior to the surgery were inaccessible. He could not retrieve them. However, if, when a scientist asked him to retrieve more remote memories, he had better and better success in a gradient-like fashion. This suggested that there was some kind of processing of memory that was happening. So recently learned information had to undergo some further processing for it to be retrievable without a hippocampus. And in the previous lesson we called that consolidation, system consolidation. The memory was being reorganized in a way that the hippocampus was no longer needed for its retrieval. Now, HM seemed to be able to retrieve remote memories of his childhood, like the stock market crash, taking banjo lessons, shooting target practice in the woods, going roller skating, etc. Uh, here's a picture of uh, HM as a boy somewhere around the 30s. Now, the fact that he seemed to be able to tell researchers about his childhood suggested that he had access to these remote memories, that he was able to have episodic memories of this early time in his life. And so we have good recall here in this part of the diagram. But there was a controversy about this. The question was, were his remote memories really vivid, detailed, and context-specific? Remember, these are the attributes of 
of uh, episodic memories. They are they are the kinds of memories where we are sort of transported back into the past. We are reliving in a vivid way. We're reliving that past moment. And there was some contra- controversy about this because the way H.M. would, would describe these uh, childhood memories seemed to be uh, less vivid and detailed and more sort of general and abstract. They just didn't have that reliving quality to them. And this was was important because if he really was retrieving vivid episodic memories from his past, then what that meant was those remote memories no longer needed the hippocampus to retrieve them. But if those uh, memories were not really genuine episodic memories, they were more sort of general, less detailed, more semantic versions, then it meant that the hippocampus was still needed to have vivid episodic memories. But what was uh, able to happen for H.M. was that he could recall semantic versions of these life events, but not vivid episodic memories. So this controversy was an important one uh, because it it raised the question as to what exactly the hippocampal system was doing in the memory processing. And in the next lesson, we'll we'll try to understand HM's symptoms in terms of the uh, consolidation theory. But one thing was clear from HM's condition, and that is that, that the removed brain tissue was an important memory processing system. H.M. spent most of his life under the care of his parents and then other people because his memory uh, disturbance prevented him from living a sort of a normal life. Uh, He died in 2008, and his brain was dissected, and scientists continued to study his brain. But he will go down as one of the most famous neurological patients in medical history.